Hello everyone, I wanted to do an updated version of the pillowcase dress video that I did not too long ago. Uh, I wanted to clear up any confusion if there was any. Um, the way I'm going to show this video is we're going to have uh, two versions of this. One is the tie is going to be on one side and then the other is going to be the tie is going to be on both sides. And these are really easy and fun to make and they are comfortable and easy to get on and off and they're good for winter also. You could put a cute little tur turtleneck underneath. You can also make them for uh, missionaries that are overseas. I know a lot of them uh, use those, uh, use these dresses um, and people will make them and send them over for it's a great cause. Um, and for that, I'm going to show you how to make a fabric strap to go here instead of the ribbon because as they wash it um, and that kind of thing, the ribbon may fray. But if you want to use the ribbon, you can also burn the edges to keep it from fraying. Subscribe to my channel and if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. I'd love to see the ones that you make. You can leave a comment at the bottom. Uh, or send me a picture. Uh, but if you're ready to go, let's go ahead and get started. I'm also going to have a cheat sheet down in my description of the video as far as uh, measurements and sizes that you need for the ribbon and the dress itself. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is decide what size you, you're going to make. I am going to make a 12 to 18 month and for that I need a 15 inch by 19 inch piece of fabric. So I've already cut my fabric out for the size that I need and I've got two. And then for the strap, um, you need a 44 inch long fabric, piece of fabric by two and a half inches wide. And uh, this is going to be the strap that's going to make the ties. And if you were just going to use regular groving ribbon, which you can use, um, it would just be the same size, but you know your your width is different, and that's okay. And so I've already cut my pieces out. I want to iron my pieces out really flat so it's easy to work with. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and do the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and sew up our side seams. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to dig zigzag stitch on both sides of each piece. You can do this on a serger if you have a serger. Uh, you can also get a um, presser foot called side sew and cut and it is like a serger, but it's a presser foot for your regular machine. So if you don't have a serger and you wanna do that, you can do that also. I would do some research though on which kind that you need because there's different kinds for different machines. But I'm just gonna simply do a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna be as close to the edge as I can get and I'm gonna do that for each piece. now finish sewing each side of the fabric pieces with the zigzag stitch so it kind of looks like that it kind of looks like a little roll hem now this is where there was a little confusion on the last video now that I've got my sides for each piece of fabric zigzagged we're going to put the right sides together and we're going to sew the side seams together and we're gonna do this before we make the casing. So for the 12 to 18 month size, we need a five inch armhole from the top of the fabric. So we're gonna go ahead and make our armhole. We are going to start sewing down 
five inches from the top of our fabric and we're going to start stitching and then back stitch right there and you want to make sure your fabric pieces are going the right side the right way if you have directional fabric which i have and they are and you want to start from the top of the directional fabric and you're going to go down about five inches now i have a little ruler right here so i'm going to put it on my ruler and here's five inches where my thumb is. So now I'm just gonna put that under my presser foot and I'm going to keep my edges together and I'm gonna start sewing at a half inch seam allowance. And when I start sewing, I'm going to backstitch just to uh, secure it. And then I'm gonna sew all the way to the end. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna put it together and then find my five inches down from the top. Put a little thumb mark there. And then start stitching, back stitch, and then stitch all the way down. Now we have got the side sewn together. Now we're gonna take it back to the ironing board. We're going to iron these seams and we're also going to make the casing and the hem. So let's go to the ironing board now. When you get to the ironing board, you want to iron down your side seams first. Now my dress is too small to fit over my big ironing board. So I have this little ironing board that works perfect for smaller dresses and doll clothes and this thing is about 100 years old i don't even remember where i got it i think i found it at some yard sale or something but anyway i'm just going to slip that over it and then i'm going to fold down my seams my side seams like this and then i'm just going to press them open and then you want to do the same thing with the armholes you want to press them down at the same width as your other seams, just like that. And if you want, you can put a pin in these up here so they don't come open while you're moving the dress around. Now we're going to do the other side, so I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna iron down, do the same thing I did on the other side. I just iron these seams down. And then where the arm is, I'm just gonna iron it down the same width as the other seams. Make sure that is nice and flat. Okay, now that we've got it on the ironing board, let's go ahead and make the hem. So how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna fold this over about a half an inch and then fold it over again about another half an inch. Now, depending on how long you want the dress, you can fold it over an inch if you want. That's just your preference, however, you long, however long you want it to be. I kinda like my pillowcase dresses to be pretty long, so. I fold over a half inch and then fold over another half inch. And then we're gonna do that all the way around. I've got my hem all folded and pinned and now we're gonna take it back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew up the armholes and sew the hem as well. When you have a soft, small dress like this, it's best to go ahead and take out the insert of your sewing machine. That way it'll fit better on there. The bigger dresses, it doesn't matter, but the smaller ones tend to 
won't fit. So we're going to sew the armholes first. So you're going to start at the top of one side and you're going to sew all the way down and stop about an inch, half an inch, an inch below where you sewed this, the hem together. And then you're going to pivot, turn, sew a little few stitches, and then you're going to pivot, turn, and then sew right back up. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm sewing down my armhole. And then I'm going to stop about half an inch, an inch to an inch past where I sewed the dress together. And then I'm going to stitch over. And then I'm going to sew back up the seam. And so that's how you sew the armhole together. Now, let's go ahead and do the other side. And that's it, you've created your armhole. Okay, you didn't have to use any kind of bias tape, you didn't have to cut any kind of circles, so this is just a real easy way to make the armholes. Now we're gonna go ahead and sew up the seam. We're gonna get as close to the edge as we can, about a fourth of an inch from the edge, and we're just gonna sew the seam all the way around. I'm sorry, this is the hem, not the seam. Now when you get to where you started, just stitch over it and then back stitch a little and I'm just gonna clip my threads here. So I've already sewed, sewn up my hem all the way around. Okay, now we're gonna take it back to the sewing, back to the ironing board and we're gonna make our casing. Now in order to make our casing, you wanna make sure that it is right sides are together so the wrong side is facing you. And I'm gonna lay it flat on my ironing board like this and I'm just going to take the bottom piece and just kind of fold it under so it's not so I don't pin it with the top part and then we're just going to fold down the top edge now if you want you can zigzag that top edge but I like to fold it down because when you turn it again to make your casing there's there's a finished edge right here so I fold it down about a half an inch, fourth of an inch, however much, and then you're gonna iron that down. Then I'm gonna fold it over again, about an inch, and then I'm gonna iron that down. Now, I wanna pin that in place so as it's moving around, it doesn't pop up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now for this side, to make sure that they kind of, they match up, leave this one that you just folded down to make the casing, leave it out, don't fold it under, leave it out like this. Take your top piece again, fold it down about a half of an inch and then fold it over again, and this time matching your edges up with the one that you had just done before, and that way it'll be a little, it'll be even. And if it's not exactly even, it's, it's not gonna matter. These pillowcase dresses are so forgiving. They're, um, because when you put them on, they're gonna be gathered up, so you're not gonna really be able to tell 
you know, if it's even or not, because it's going to be all gathered up and all. Okay, now we're going to take this back to the sewing machine and then just sew down the casing. To sew down this casing, we're going to start on one end and we're going to back stitch to secure it and we're going to sew all the way down to the other end and back stitch to secure that as well. And we're just using a straight stitch and you're going to sew about a fourth of an inch from the edge. to cut any loose threads and make sure that those are all clipped off. Okay, and then turn it right side out. Okay, and now you have completed the dress part. Now we're gonna make the strap for the top. So here's my strap here. And if you had a wrong side or right side, at this point you would put the wrong sides together. I'm sorry, you would put the right, you would fold it over with the right sides together. I'm folding it over lengthwise and you just match up your edge. We're just gonna sew a straight stitch all the way down the end, and I would use about a half of an inch seam allowance. here and now what we're going to do is turn the strap right side out. An easy way to turn the right the strap right side out, especially if it's this small, you're just going to take a safety pin and pin it on the edge of the fold and close it up and then you're going to push that down and you're going to just keep pushing it down using your fingers to pull the fabric on top of the pin and then you're just going to find a piece and just pull the fabric over, over the edge, like that. And then you're just gonna keep going. Just keep pushing that fabric up. You wanna make sure you hold on to the pin inside, otherwise you, you'll lose it. Okay like that. All right, now you wanna take your edges and fold them in like this. And then you're just gonna sew those closed. So you'll have a nice clean edge. Fold it in. 
I kind of get it, but it folds even. And then you're just going to sew it up, close up the edge. And when you close the edge up, the back stitch as you go over it. this point I'm going to I'm going to cut my loose threads and now if you want you can take this to the ironing board and flatten it out so you'll have a nice flat strap so let's go ahead and do that now so I'm going to take my strap and I'm going to fold it down to where the seam is on one side and I'm just going to iron that flat all the way down. Just like that. Now it's time to put it in the casing of our dress. So to do that, I'm going to put a safety pin in one end, close it up, take my dress. I'm gonna feed it through one end of the casing of my dress. I'm gonna push it all in there. And then hold my pin and I'm just pushing it through while I'm holding on to the fabric or holding on to the safety pin and then just pulling it through. And then I'm going to turn it and then go through the other side. And then do the exact same thing. Your strap may be a little bit bigger than your casing, if that's okay. If it is, you can just pull it over it. And then just keep pulling it through till you get to the other side. Okay. All right. And then even up the straps, And then you're done. You have your cute little pillowcase dress here. Now let's go try it on the mannequin and see. This is a, a six month mannequin and I have the bow on one side. And please keep in mind that the measurements are just suggestions. Um, if you feel like you need it bigger, the armholes bigger, you know, please feel free to cut it bigger, how, whatever size you think you may, you may need. Um, but that is the one that goes on the side. So what I'm going to show you next is how to make the one that ties on both sides. And I'm just going to use the same exact dress. I'm just going to pull this ribbon out or the strap out and then use this dress showing you how to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. I have cut two pieces of grogain ribbon and the measurement for the strap, which was 44 inch for the um, this size dress, I've just cut this in half. So I've got two, 22 inches for each piece of ribbon. And again, if you feel like that's not enough, um, then you can add a couple of more inches. This is definitely up to you. It's just, it's your preference. So now I'm going to feed this through the casing of the dress and I'm just going to use my safety pin again. So I just put a safety pin at the edge of the ribbon and I'm just going to poke it through here. And then go all the way out the other side. And then you're going to pull it straight 
even out on each side. And then make sure that you have the same amount of ribbon hanging out on each side. And then I would suggest, you don't have to do this, but I would suggest just sewing a single stitch in between this dress of the casing just to hold the ribbon in place. That way it won't come out. And to do that, just find the center. So I'd fold, I would fold the front or the back, whatever, doesn't matter the side is. And then match up with the armholes and then find the center, which is right here. I'm just gonna put my finger there and I'm just gonna make a little stitch. And I just made a little stitch in the casing and I just stitch forward and backwards right there and that'll hold the ribbon in place. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I have my ribbon both through both sides and I have sewn down the middle of the casing on each side to kind of hold the ribbon down. Now we're ready to go try it on the mannequin. I've also cut my loose threads. Here's one right here. Now when you use the pin, you can kind of have holes in your ribbon. Um, you can, what you can do for that is if it's not too short, you can cut it off, but if you think it's too short, then just cut your ribbon a little longer. But anyway, all right, let's go ahead and go try this on the mannequin now. All right, here's the one with the ties on the side. You can either do bows or you could do little loose knots. And if you do the knots, it's so much, it's really easy to get the knots out with this kind of ribbon. But uh, anyway, so here is this one with the two ties on the sides. I think it turned out really well. Um, I am gonna make a suggestion. I'm going to readjust my strap measurements and make the measurements a little longer. I do feel like making these, it was um, probably not long enough. Um, I'd, I'd prefer it to be too long than too short because if it's too long, you can always cut it off. And I do believe my mannequin here may be a little bigger than um, a, a, si a true six months. Uh, but anyway, so there you have it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this one was better uh, to understand. And thanks so much for sticking with me. It's so crafty with Connie. And if you finish one or make one, I'd love to see pictures of it. You can either comment on my video or send it to me email Fleming Connie G at gmail.com and uh, don't forget to go to my Facebook page. You can also share it there if you'd like. So crafty helping animals. Um, so thanks so much for being with you with me and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a big thumbs up and all of the information for this as far as measurements will be in the description below of this video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.